Well, good morning. My name is Jim Deacon. Uh, I'm a local care hawk representative for this part of Colorado. Uh, API Systems Integrators and Western States Fire Protection is our company. Uh, we, we service all of northern Colorado for fire protection, land safety, cameras, access control, PA systems. We, we take care of all the low voltage systems. Uh, a couple of little goodie bags if for anybody that got there and wanted to sit up front off these new did. <laughs> I thought that was like rep stuff. Honestly. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're going to talk about the, the CH 2000 IP PA life safety system today. We've got uh, David Verucci, he's our regional sales representative, and Todd, he's the, I'm not sure exactly what his title is, but he's one of the head gurus in charge over there. So. Morning, morning, everyone. Presentation for you guys. Morning. Show you morning. everything you need to know. Feel free to ask questions as we go. If something comes up, uh, I've got a couple of brochures I'll leave for you guys too, so you have something to remember it by. And since we're on a short time schedule, I'll turn it over to David and Todd. Sure. Do you mind if we do some quick introductions? Thank you. you know sure. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm Memory. So and again, I'm David Brookie. I'm. Uh, Getting a little feedback on my There's head. a little delay also on there. Hey, David, we're going to do some okay. introductions. Okay, I'm based in Dallas. <laughs> Maybe. And I cover <laughs> seven yeah. states, including the great state of Colorado. Uh, today I have with me Todd Butler, our technical services director in Canada, where a lot of our equipment is manufactured. I'm going to spend just a minute on a quick overview of uh, 2000. System components, and then we're going to screen share with a talk. He's going to go through answering some of your questions or all of your questions. Okay. Hey, David, give us one minute so we can do some local inter inter introductions. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm Memory, I'm the purchasing manager. I'll be helping to facilitate the purchasing part of it and the contracts and such. And I'll look at him. Yeah. I'm Jeff. Uh, do our uh, own system and uh, security system, so door access and cameras and whatnot. So we would be some time together. Can experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jeff. How are you? Uh, John Ellingson. I'm the network administrator. Networks is one. Hello, John. <laughs> Trevor Timmons, director of technology. Stephen Gallardi. Uh, what was your name again? I'm sorry. Trevor. Trevor, thank you. Stephen Gallardi, Enterprise Technology Manager. Good morning. What's up? I'm BJ Noon, uh, District Computer Technician. Hello? Hey. You have a full house there, I see. We're right here. <laughs> we do, yes. Well, the backbones of the CH2. Now, the system is our Dell processor. Do you want to keep a little hand moving around? Nope. No, I kicked you out and it's got my screen up there, David. I think you just switched tabs, maybe. There we go. There we go. We're good. You're good now. Okay, so the backbone of our system is our Dell processor. It comes in 128. Point and a 250 specs, depending on the size of the school. Uh, a key component of our system is a software based map assist where you would, we would download the school book blueprint and many customizations, including access to your uh, calendar, statement, your domes, tones, and everything as such, where all your software is based. We have a very nice uh, compatible admin phone that ties to the system. We recently launched our vCall Plus, which is our uh, cell phone app. Tremendous little tool that we're very excited to have on board. Uh, we have an assortment of visual displays, 10 inch, 22 inch. Uh, we like to call them our complete classroom. So besides visual, we have audio speaker, microphone, customizable strobe lights. And then uh, other options, 
We have a gateway that can tie to speakers in the classroom, as well as different types of call switches. So that's a quick overview on some equipment. And if I could, I'd like to share screens with Todd so we can start going through some of it. Todd? So, uh, David, we can share. Uh, there, we, I've got some wicked feedback here, echo going on on my side. Hey, Jim, can you do me a favor? And you, David, you were echoing you, it as well. Can you click on those two things uh, where they go away? I'm going to turn my volume down. That just bothered me. Jim, you might want to mute from our side in the bottom left, and then um, we can unmute to ask questions, but that might prevent the feedback. How's that, Todd? Oh, you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to turn up. Hey, Todd, I'm going to go mute. You turn the volume down on your screen. You can't. There we go. Uh, David, I don't know if you need to share your screen, or um, I don't know how Todd, you can share. Good. Todd, I think we're good to go. on the uh, main tab line, the uh, green button for share, you can take it over. Share screen. There we go. Okay, let's share this one. Okay, can you guys see my screen now? Uh, no, we can still just see David's. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, you see my screen now? No? You do? Yeah, no. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to log out of this one here. I log out here. Uh, this is a touchscreen, by the way. 32-inch uh, or, or whatever it is, but it is a touchscreen. Um, this is the Map Assist server that's here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a Lenovo machine. Um, now, you can control Map Assist or the system from here, but I have two users created, so I've created another role so that from this computer here, I can log into the Map Assist, the server. So here, this is this is my map. I don't have it completely drawn out, and um, I've only got four endpoints on here. Uh, auditorium, cafeteria, corridor, and I've got this thing called the outside. I've got some other rooms drawn over here. They are, um, they don't exist in my 2000 IP, which is why they're green. Okay. So the system is somewhat supervised. Uh, I've got three clock message and, um, sorry, I've got one clock message and three gateways. Let me, let me just grab, um, let me grab a gateway. Um, anyway, long story short, I have four endpoints. Um, if one of my endpoints goes offline, for example, if I go and unplug one of my gateways, this room will go black. And that's an indication that, hey, look, your endpoint has gone offline. There's something wrong. Somebody needs to go and check the room out. So um, anyway, this is Map Assist here. I don't know you guys can move this stuff. So here. All right. Now. Let's address some of the questions that, um, that David had, programming a bell schedule. So quickly, folks here, this is the main home screen. Um, there's some stuff here. This is where you would do your calendar activities, audio. This is where I can add tones or change the priority of tones. Access, this is where I've created um, users and, and roles. So right now I have two. Um, admin is admin is the default account. You can't change it. Now if I come in here, roles and uh, let's see, view roles. So there's only one role. It's admin. Okay. But when I create another user, I can prevent them from changing things. Like I can prevent that. I can only let them do intercom or only let them do paging or change the calendar. I can lock them out from everything else or allow them to do everything as well. Settings. 
Um, so this is where you set your security tones. I've already got some preset for us. We can do email notifications and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into all of that. It's highly customizable. All right. So we're at the home screen here. Um, just quickly, you know, if I do a page, I don't know if you can see my screen over here. It says paging. I've got a bunch of feedback because I'm far too close to everything here. <laughs> and that's it. That's a quick, uh, quick, simple page. Um, if I want to do an intercom call to a room, uh, come over here, uh, zones here, these people here. So now I'm having an intercom call with that room, and I'll just hang up. Get back to my home screen here. So let's address some of the things here quickly. Uh, programming a bell schedule. Painless. It's painless. So over here, I've got, um, you know what, I'll just delete this. We'll just start over. I have no schedule now, okay? So there's a couple of things here. Set the school year. My school year starts at 9 12 2022 and it ends on 6 30 of 2023. Uh, set the weekday schedule. I can't do that yet because I don't have a schedule. So we're going to add a day schedule here. Everything is a day schedule. I'm just going to call this regular day. Regular day. I want to play a tone. Let's say that school starts at, um, I'm going to play it everywhere. I'm going to say that school starts at mm, how about 9 in the morning. And I'm going to save that. Uh, we have to play a tone. Okay, now I have one event. I'm going to make another bell. This is very simple. I'm going to say we have a bell at 10 o'clock as well. I'm going to say we have another bell at 11, 12 p.m. And we'll do another one here at, let's say, 1 o'clock. Save, and I'll save that. So, <clears throat> now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to say that every day, we're just going to run this regular, regular day. And if I come back over here, so now I've populated my calendar. Today is the 24th. As you can see, I'm running regular day. Now, uh, I'm going to go back and say, let's make a new schedule. We're going to call this, um, I don't know, early dismissal. We're going to play a tone. Let's say on this day, um, school is going to start again at um, 8 o'clock in the morning. Just pick a tone at random here. We're going to have a bell at um, 10 o'clock, let's say. And let's say this school is going to get out at 11 o'clock. That's going to be our last bell. So I've saved it. Now, let's say next week on Tuesday, you want to have the other schedule. Early dismissal. That's it. That's all you have to do, folks. It's changed. So. Creating a calendar, like a schedule, is very simple, and switching to your, your, your new schedule is, you come in here, you pull this drop down, and that's it. <clears throat> you can also set exclusion dates. Um, an exclusion date would be something like March break. You don't want to have any bells. So if I said something like uh, 324 to 324, I'll just, you know what, let me say, what is today? Today is it? I'm going to say that, um, let's say we're going to have an exclusion next week. I'll call it March break. And if I come back to my calendar, so we will have no bells next week. March break, March break, March break, March break. I can make that go away. So, um, modifying traditional bell schedule. Can somebody sort of tell me, give me more details about what, what that means? Like, I, I think that I've just covered.
look, you have a regular bell schedule, but if you need a different bell schedule, you just create another one and simply tell it which day you want it to run. That's really what we want, Jim. So that makes sense. Folks said you, that that you might need to unmute to tell them that. <laughs> hey, Todd, I think that's enough on the bell schedule. I think that's the gist of it. Perfect. Uh, alert buttons. Can you guys give me a bit more detail about the alert buttons and SRP? We, we certainly, you know, let me just talk about what, can you meet your side again for me? Perfect. Um, so we do have buttons. I don't have any buttons tied to my system right now. Um, there are call buttons that can go on, um, that, that go into each room. Those are just simply to do, um, yeah, I have, a, I have a button on my system here, so let me go push it. So you know what you're on your list of questions, the next one was the alert buttons, programming the alert buttons to match the SRP? Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. Okay. You see the room is calling in and I'll answer the call here. Yeah, so... Check one, two, check one, two. Hey, uh, Trevor wants to explain what they're looking for on that one. Todd, we... Can you go we use the I love you guys standard response protocol. There are five statuses that are just standard. And so an office could tell all of the classrooms that they need to either hold, secure, lock down, evacuate, or shelter. And our current system, those are all buttons on a panel that are pre-recorded in the principal's voice. So when we need to go into a lockdown, they just click the lockdown button and, and then that message is broadcast automatically. Do you have pre-recorded buttons like that? Yes, okay. So uh, we, do, we do have it right now. Can you mute your side again for me, please? Right now we have a, a button, it's called the AS3B LWE. The L, it's, it's three buttons. It's lockdown, uh, weather, and evacuate is what the LWE stands for. We have um, coming out uh, very soon, and before your school is built, um, it is going to be uh, a general purpose input-output interface for the 2000 IP. It will have eight in and eight out. So. To cover your five messages, um, yeah, absolutely. You can have five individual buttons that are programmed to play. So here, I've got some standard stuff in here like lockdown, evacuate, and stuff like that. But um, when the GPIO comes out, we will, here, if I go into audio over here, and if I go add a tone, um, so this is where we would add your specific message for lockdown. So you've got our GPIO with the five buttons on it. Button number one does lockdown. So when that button is pushed, uh, the system would be programmed to play your lockdown tone. Uh, button number two will be, you know, for the four other uh, activities or, or um, levels uh, that you need to address. Um, so, yeah, we can address that with our GPIO, which I believe is coming out in the second quarter. Um, they're working diligent on it now. I saw a presentation on it the other day. So, um... Okay, Tom, we got another question? Yep. Uh, Tom, this is Jeff. So, my, my question is, so pushing that button, what's the ability for that to integrate with a door camera system? So you push that button and it plays the, 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 the tone, that's great, it gives the, the pre-recorded audio. Do we have to do something else for our door access, or can we program those together to where that button would also talk to the, uh, the door access um, system and shut it down? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you, oh, okay. So um, our GPIO, as I said, eight in, eight out. So not only can I do an action when I get an input from a button, but I can also activate an output on that input action. Um, if you want me to lock your doors or something like that, then I would just go to your, your access control. But long story short, on a lockdown or any of the other input actions, I can program an output. That output can be used to go to something on your side 
to tell your doors to lock. It is just a dry contact. There's no data or anything like that. But I can certainly give you a trigger that you would use to do something on your side. I have a question. I think that answers that question. We've got another one. So that system is not available today, correct? I understand. No, the GPIO is not out today. We have the three button lockdown and weather evacuate, which is on the system currently, not on this one right here, but is available. The GPIO is coming in the next couple of months, I understand. Thank you. All right. Let me carry on. Programming buttons, addressing announcements to a specific room or a group of rooms, turning on, off specific speakers, not broadcasting general announcements outside. Again. Okay. So I've got four endpoints configured here. I've got auditorium, cafeteria, hallways, and this thing that I've called outside. This view that I'm looking at here, this is all global stuff. So if I did a tone, I'll just play. Music, emergency page. All right. So you folks, I've got some system zones that are pre-programmed, but you can make your own zone. I'm going to say add a user zone, and I'm going to call this inside. And I'm going to select this room, this room, and this room. There we go. And now if I page that zone, which is called inside, as you can see, I'm not going to the outside speakers. If I want to have another zone outside, then I could just create another zone, and I'll just call it outside. And I'll add just this room to it. Save. So now I have two rooms, inside, outside. If I want to have a, I'll make another zone here called halls, and I'll just add this room. So there, I've just created three simple zones, and I can page them or tone, or now just the hallway is gone. And if I do the inside again, just the inside speakers. And if I want to talk to the outside, of course, I just page that outside zone that I just created. So folks, I think that addresses the addressing announcements to specific room or group of rooms, turning on, off specific speakers. You can create your own zones on the fly or leave them there all the time. Typically, you'll probably create an inside zone, which won't go to any of your outside stuff. If you want to make announcements, again, using the zone feature, that's what you would do. So folks, does that address the question about the addressing announcements to specific and turning on, off speakers? We don't turn on, off speakers. Yes, everybody's shaking their head. Okay, perfect. Remote cloud access, what are you talking about there? So for emergency alerts, if the principal is outside of the building and needs to send an emergency alert into the building, if they would be able to use a cell phone or a cloud app to access the system to send that alert. So I think this is probably a good segue to vCall Plus. Because vCall Plus, as David said, is an app that runs on your cell phone. It looks like this, okay? So I have three buttons on. Todd, can they download that now so they can look at it and play with it at their leisure, or do they have to have the service to do it? No, no, there is a demo. So if you go into the App Store, you know, the Apple or Android, look for vCall Plus by Carehawk. You can download it, and we do have a demo version. 
Thank you. It can run in demo mode. Thank you. <coughs> All right. So I'm the principal, and I'm outside, and I have the BPOL Plus app on my phone. Um, if I, as I said, I've got three options here: call in, emergency call in, and lockdown. Okay. Um, I've got I've got my BPOL app configured so that I can do everything, but I can prevent people from doing a lockdown. So let me get my screen up here. I'm gonna go lockdown. Are you sure? Okay. I'm going to check in. So even though I've initiated it, I'm going to check in. Right now I'm room 1001, which is the auditorium. The check-in button is used to notify everybody else that your room is okay. Check in. Now I go blue over there. So I'm going to do the all clear. And we go all clear. <coughs> I'm going to do a call in now. So interesting to know, folks, um, not yet. There is no communication on the cell phone. Okay. When I do this, you are talking, if, if doing a call in, and when you connect to it, you'll be talking to the speaker in the room. Okay. Um, at some point in time, I really hope that BCall Plus will integrate some voice, but currently not. So, uh, and the other option is emergency call-in. All right, so that is the lockdown, that's BCall Plus. Um, and lockdown, let me get back to remote cloud access. Okay, so Did that answer that question? That answer that I have. Yeah, we're, um, good. We're, good. we're good on that one. Let's move to the next one. Okay. So on that though, so okay. Okay. Wait, wait, so uh, hey, hey, quickly. Doc, we got one more question. Okay, go ahead. So the check-in still is blue. That was, and that's cool to see that. But is there a way that you can check in and not be okay? So I, I mean, I mean, I, 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 can, I can barely hear you. Is, is, so can you? I see that the check-in clears that room or, or illustrates it in blue. If you're not okay, is there a check-in that you can do that would illustrate a different color to indicate that you need something ASAP? Uh, no, there is not. There is not a check-in that uh, is an escalated um, emergency. So it would just look like somebody. The only check-in that we have is the room is okay. Okay. So ultimately, if you had a lockdown situation and everybody checked in except for one room, that's where you're gonna send the police or the school resource officer or first responders. Okay. Um, so there, uh, quickly, one more thing. Yep. The, the, the cloud access question was more of... Yeah. Did you have another question? Yeah, hold on, Tom. Hey Todd, the, the cloud access question was more related to if a secretary forgets to turn off the bell system or schedule the bell system to go off for a specific day and it's middle of winter break and the neighbors are getting pissed off, if they can access the system from their home instead of having to drive all the way into the school to uh, change the bell system. Um. If you can mute your side again for me, please. If they have VPN access to the school's network and or some other remote control, um, yeah, they should be able to log into this. So for example, um, I, I work at home sometimes. Uh, I team view to my computer here. So I'm controlling it here. So to answer your question, if they have VPN access to the network and this computer is on the network and it's turned on, yes, they should be able to access this and turn it off remotely. Thank you. But again, it all it, it, it all depends on your network and can people from their home computer VPN to your network to be able to access it. <laughs> Does 
that address the question? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, quickly, just one more thing here before I go on to the next thing. The CH2000 IP map assist has a microphone that I'm using. When I use a computer, I'm talking on the microphone. But as David said, we also have the Admin 7 phone. This is the app. It's a nice SIP phone. I'll just go emergency page all. That's instantaneous. Now, so I have a phone connected to map assist. That's the Admin 7. I have the microphone, which is map assist. But I also, I've got a PBX integrated. I've got a SIP trunk from my PBX to my 2000 IP. And I have this fancy little app that's running on my phone. It's a SIP soft phone app. I'm basically an extension on my PBX. I've done some fancy programming with it so that it allows me to make a page from my cell phone. Check one, two. Check, check. But any SIP phone that's on my PBX can access the trunk and make an announcement. I've just automated something there. So it is possible. I guess the point is we can take a SIP trunk from your system for your phones to access it. Now, if I call 9000, so my trunk is 9000. If I call 9000 from my phone, I'll get a dial tone back from the system. And then I can call a room or do whatever I need to do there. All right. Volume adjustment per room. Yes, we do have a volume adjustment. I don't know if you can see the clock message here behind me. There is a yellow light on it. That is telling me that there's low power because I'm not using a PoE switch. I'm using an injector. So all of our endpoints are volume adjustable. This device here, the clock message with the speaker built in, is adjustable over here. Beats a day. It's adjustable in here. Here. I need to move this stuff. You got it. There we go. Audio. Okay. Talk volume. That's adjustable right there. Okay. Now, we have a gateway that David showed you a picture of. And I'll just disconnect this, which will hopefully go black on my screen. This is the gateway. It's a little gateway that goes in the room. There are volume adjustments on here. There's two buttons, volume up, volume down. So all of our endpoints are adjustable in volume. This one is done through the interface. This one is a physical adjustment. You have to get to the unit. You may be able to adjust it through the interface as well. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that. Integration to school calendar. Can you give me a little more details on that, please? Can it integrate into Google Calendar? Did you cover that, Todd? Sorry, can we integrate to Google Calendar? Not at this time. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Okay, thank you. But I will ask. Folks, that wraps up everything that I've got here. I wish we could do this in person because it's a lot cooler in person. David, I did make a screen. So let me... David wanted a screen. Pizza day. Pizza day. And I found this. You guys aren't going to hear this, but... What you're seeing on what's happening on that screen is that. So if you wanted to put an announcement, PTA meeting Tuesday night, football game Friday night at 7.30, whatever kind of fun stuff you want to roll through the display, you can do it pretty easily. 
As far as questions, the only thing I've written down is uh, response to integrate to Google Calendar. We'll have to get an answer back for you on that, where that stands. Uh, anything else that may I missed? Will this system integrate with the Vigilant? Does it integrate with the Vigilant Sorry, camera? Can't... Does it integrate with the Vigilant camera systems? Not at this time. Uh, I don't know what the roadmap is for cameras. Um, I have a personal opinion on that, but that doesn't mean that that, that will go that way. Um, so you, you guys have a DVR, I guess, or something like that. Um, you want to, I guess you want to be able to see, um, you know, if somebody goes to a door and pushes a button, say, for example, they're outside and you've got a camera at the door, all your doors are locked during the day because that's how you roll. Um, you push a button and essentially what you want to see is a camera pop up on the screen at that door, correct? And then you would make some Not necessarily. decision to open the door. The, the question would be is if, okay. we, if we issued a lockdown on Carehawk, will it lock the doors also? Or do we have to manipulate two systems? Again, your, your, your doors are locked by a separate system, some access control. They might be mag lock or uh, electric strikes. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can give a signal to you guys to lock the doors. That would come from our GPIO. But, um, you know, Controlling doors directly, I guess that's possible through our output, but um, typically there's an access control system that that is controlling the doors, and we just connect to that. But um, I guess it is conceivable that uh, I could control a lock if I had to. Um, but again, like I said, the access control normally looks after that. That's why I was asking about the integration to a Vigilant. So thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, David, uh, any more questions or concerns, or would you like to see anything Anything else? Anything else, Jimmy, on your end? Okay. Last minute okay. thoughts? Yeah, they've got another question. Can you talk me through the, I, I see the clock in the background there, you know, and when, when you did that pizza day, I saw that display come up. What speakers do you use for, I mean, we've got classrooms, we've got hallways, we've got outdoors. Um, I assume that there's a wide variety of speakers that we can get, some with tech, some with LEDs. Uh, can you walk me through what that is or, or what speakers you use? So this is this product here, this is, can you mute? Uh, again, please, thank you. Can you, can you uh, mute, mute after a question, please? This is our 10 inch clock speaker combo. Um, I don't know what the speaker is inside here. It's a, it's a four or eight ohm speaker, uh, something like that. Now, your existing speakers that you have and you're going to reuse will be run by a gateway. Your outside speakers and your hallways and stuff like that, again, will be run by this endpoint, but will have an external amplifier connected to them. So the, the audio output from here will go to um, you know, a 25 volt, 100 watt amplifier, whatever your speakers are, and then the output of that will go to the string of the speakers. This device here comes in um, a dual version. This is not a dual version. Um, it also comes in uh, just a display with no speaker or a dual display with no speaker. The strobes that you see on here are programmable. I can change what they do. Um, over here, let's see, the idle screen doesn't do it, um, so lockdown. Hey Tom, lockdown. let me throw something else in. So yeah. typically in a classroom, if you went without the all-in-ones, uh, you went with a gateway, you need a speaker. Uh, outside of the classrooms, hallways, large auditoriums, outside, Typically, we would use probably 25 volt speakers normally. 
Uh, we partner with Quam Manufacturer in Chicago, well-known speaker manufacturer, does a really good job. They sell all types of speakers, uh, ceiling mount, wall mount, different IP type. Um, we've had very good success <coughs> partnering with Quam over the years. So really a lot of different choices on the speakers. Um, anyway, go ahead back to your uh, talking about the uh, strobes. Strobes, uh, and there's four strobes on here. Um, this one is telling me low power, as I said before, but these are programmable. Um, if I did a lockdown now, the strobes behavior will be what you see on my screen here. Red, red, white, white. Um, so here we'll just do a quick, I'll, I'll do that quickly. Uh, and I'll do it from here, lockdown. As you can see, I, the room that I've disconnected to show you this gateway is now black. It's offline. And we'll do the all clear. Uh, currently, I think we have nine customizable ways on the strobes, with different colors and sequencing. I believe yeah. in the second quarter, we've got a new launch of additional uh, customizations of the strobes. I've got a school district north of Dallas, Fort Worth, and Denton that's going to be looking at doing a lot of visual displays. I think we're going to craft up some pretty cool stuff with getting their uh, school logos and stuff on that and some different colors that uh, blend in with their school colors. Uh, David, that's all I have on, uh, on, on speakers and, and um, how it runs. And then you have scrolling LED so displays. So if I may, David, you have to have scrolling LED displays too, correct? Uh, well, our largest display is 22 inch, inch. And, uh, L LCD display in the IP sector. Okay. Uh, we it is a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. We up to a 45 inch or larger visual display in, with our CH1000. I'm not sure we can do that yet with the 2000. Just a quick history uh, Carehawk USA started in 2013 2014. We launched our CH1000 analog system. We're currently in over 5,800 schools uh, in North America with it. Uh, we're gonna keep that forever. Most of our competitors are getting out of the analog world. Our CH2000, we uh, came out with just over probably two years ago. So it's still relatively new for us. Everything in our product development list is all related to IP. So we're going to have, a year from now, we're going to have some even more cool stuff that we'll be doing from uh, today here in March of 2022. Wait, wait, 2023? Yeah, 2023. I think it's 2023, David, I think. Yeah, there we go. So if your school is being built and won't go live until uh, next year, um, we're going to have quite a, a few new enhancements by then. Uh, folks, as I said before, this is obviously a touch screen, so, you know, I can... Pretty cool stuff. Can you touch on it real quick, the district-wide application, how everything can be controlled from admin through all the different schools? Yeah, so I don't want to talk about that uh, too much, but um, that's... Uh, what we're calling multi-campus, okay? Um, and I believe that, uh, again, this will be out before the school is built. Um, I believe that's coming in third quarter. Um, but yes, it will be a means of uh, controlling multiple CH2000 IPs from a single location and updating, um, you know, all of the calendars from a single location, if so required. I don't know exactly how that is all going to look at this time, but yes, it is coming to answer your question. You will be able to, um, you know, from a single location, uh, control, um, don't want to call it district-wide because we're not calling it district-wide, but that's essentially what it is, uh, but we call it multi-campus. So yes, it, it, it is coming. Uh, it is not out, but it is on the way.
with the CH-1000 analysis? We currently have district-wide in our CH-1000, obviously, because that system's been around longer. Uh, it can, you can set it up for one-way or two-way communication. You can even connect it to systems that don't have a CH-1000. Uh, it could be, you know, a legacy Duquesne or even a competitor product. We can also set it up for third party like police or S uh, school resource officers or such. Not sure 100% on the direction of this multi-campus, but I believe uh, third party will be included in, with it, uh, similar to what we do with the 1000. And if you want information on the CH1000, the analog version. Yeah, I was having a discussion with engineering the other day uh, about, uh, about that data. Um, um, the analog system you know, has a lot of extra uh, features that this one calling it calling some sort of first responder. Um, I, I, again, I, I believe that's in the roadmap, uh, but uh, we don't don't have it uh, today, not directly. Um, when the GPIO comes out, um, I'm just I'm speculating that I should be able to do something with that. Again, um, I get a lockdown indication. I uh, fire an output, and that output might go to some sort of auto dialer with a pre recorded message. Um, I just need the facility to get out. Um, but anyway, um, we're not we're not calling the police or first responders at this time. David, one of the other questions on here is uh, factory training for the school district technicians and users. Uh, yeah, we have capability. Uh, we did quite a bit last year, our large distributor in Virginia. I think they had 32 attendees. Uh, 16 of them were from different school uh, districts. Uh, so we can do that kind of large opportunity. We came on site to do. But we can do uh, training that's uh, geared through online training or come to our corporate facility outside of Orlando for classroom training. Uh, and, and, and we'll, if we're chosen to do that. And a lot of that's going to be on the distributor's shoulders, by the way. Uh, we do have tech support, Monday through Friday, after hours calls, stuff needs addressed after hours. Uh, I can tell you this, about 50% of our calls to tech support are schools forgot how to change their bell schedule. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 50% of our tech calls tend to be around the uh, bell schedules. Thank you. Any other questions? I have two questions, more hardware based. Um, the clock that you have behind you, Todd, I am guessing that's IP based? It, uh, yes, absolutely, it is IP based. Okay. And the interconnection for the gateway, I'm guessing that's just going to be used to go from IP to analog speakers? That is correct. Everything is, uh, this is a SIP paging endpoint is what it is. It is analog after that. Yes, the output is analog to uh, uh, a dome or forum speaker. But yes, everything everything is void to the endpoint. Okay, so two more questions just really quick. Um, if we are putting IP speakers into the ceilings, would that be just connected directly back into your system? So we don't currently, uh, our current endpoints are GW2 IP1, which is this device here, okay? The GW, this is also used for music. So um, this would be the music source as well. Your, your audio, your music would go into this device and this is what broadcasts it. Um, and then um, clock message, that's this this thing here. Now other, I don't know what other is, I'll have to ask. So, um, your own IP speakers you would want to integrate? Yeah, if we had, if we had IP speakers already within the system, would we have to switch them out to analog speakers? They're SIP endpoints, so they should work. Uh, that is a good question. I would have to, uh, I'll have to check with engineering on that, but it's a, the IP speaker is just a SIP endpoint too, right? Um, Correct. Okay. Okay, next question. 
So, okay, <laughs> I'm taking up all the time now. Uh, so one-to-one -one paging when the office is calling into like a classroom, <coughs> is the microphone built into that clock behind you? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. So the, there's a speaker and a microphone in here. And last Can question. Can you be all in one without the visual in a classroom? So then you have a gateway, a speaker, and a small round flat microphone by the speaker for uh, two-way communication. Okay. And last question, because all I do is think about my network switches and the port load that I need. Um, if we're using a gateway in the classroom and one of those clocks, am I going to have to run two different wires or and use two switch ports? Um, unfortunately, you are. Okay. I didn't know if we could piggyback, a, piggyback off that gateway to go to the clock. No. No, there's one WAM port on here and that there's one WAM port on here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, network of people, um, hey, we, we, we'd be looking for a VLAN, though, right? All of our equipment should be on a VLAN on its own. Okay. Shake yeah. your head, yes. Yeah, that's what we have right now. Okay. Anything final? I gotta get ready for another Zoom call. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I've got David, if, uh, if the uh, school district and um, if everybody's done over there. I, I think we're good. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, everybody. everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, memory, for getting everybody together. Sure thing. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Thanks, Thanks, you too. Thanks, Thanks you too. Bye. Right. Any other questions that, about local support or what other? Anything that I can answer for you? Any yeah, what does local support look like? I'm it. You're it. <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> no, we have a we have a great team. Uh, we've got factory trained technicians, and they, like I said, we take care of Northern Colorado and Wyoming. So we've got manpower that we can bring in from Denver, Colorado Springs, Casper, Cheyenne. If we need to support a project, we can get manpower here to support the projects. Uh, API Systems Integrators is part of Western States. We're, a division of, we're the Electronics Division of Western States Fire Protection. Uh, so we have a lot of resources. Uh, if the project needs to get uh, materials on site, we can get the materials on site. We don't have to worry about sourcing funding to buy the materials to get here. We've got all that covered. So you got to replace emergency replacement in the whole school. Well, we can get the products here, get it installed, and then bill you when we're done. It makes it much easier for you guys when, when that can happen. Uh, Western States is also part of API Group, which is a traded company. So we're, and API Group is a worldwide company. They own Chubb and a bunch of other companies worldwide. So like I said, we have a ton of resources that we can support our school districts and, and customers. We do a lot of government work. Um, I think we're in Air Force Base. We do a lot of work up there. Uh, we do different school districts around here. We do installations, service and maintenance, test and inspect. I think we test some of your, your schools for fire protection. So yeah, we're here to we're here to support whatever you guys need. Do you know what if any school districts in Colorado are using Carehawk? Uh, the only one I've done personally so far is uh, RE three over in Fort Morgan. That's the only one I've done here in Colorado so far. I've only been with the company about two years. Uh, I came from Arizona. Had to get out of the heat. Brutal down there. See, Jeff? That was a poor You can always put more clothes on. You can't take more clothes off. That's all I know. <laughs> the golf courses are really nice down there. I do miss the golf courses. Um, I'm sorry. You got distracted. What was your question? Just what other school districts are you taking care of? Oh, yeah. uh, there's a couple down in, in uh, Denver, but I'm not sure. Uh, David would know that more better than I do because he's our regional sales rep, so he knows more. Uh, I know there's uh, the, I can't remember the name of the airport. It's over on the west side of Colorado. Uh, 
they've got the CH 2000 IP <coughs> airport for their paging system. Most everything around here is the CH 1000. It's a little bit lower cost point, a little bit more flexibility on, on installation because it's just cable copper. So it's real easy to just run a pair of wires out. They can also run on Cat5 E and Cat6 cables as well, so it's good for retrofits. Um, when you when you say you've only done Fort Morgan, are you talking about the CHP Plus? Or the CHP 1000, 1000 is what, yeah, we're, they, they have Duquesne, uh, the Duquesne start all system over there. So what's the other one you're saying? Plus? CH1000, yeah, the CH1000 is the analog system. That's the one that has the network computer for the district and district-wide controls. And uh, so that's what we're putting in over yeah, over there. We just did finish Pioneer Elementary School. We're going to do the high school this year. And then next year, we'll, we're just doing one school every year and then tying them all together. <coughs> it's pretty easy because they have a Duquesne system. The CH1000 is a direct replacement for the Duquesne Star Call system. So as they're upgrading their schools, uh, they're all network, they're all being connected together. And, and their IT department has control from the administration office. Are you interested in all that? Yep. Sorry. Any other questions? Go ahead. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me out. Thank appreciate you, for you me. allowing us to propose on this and send the information over. And hopefully, uh, we get selected and get to take care of you for the next yeah. 20 years. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah. Show us the next week. That's usually not a hard decision.